Good morning, everyone. My name is Laura. I'm your host for today for visualizing data with Seaborn. And let's jump straight in. Uh, let me a presentation for a minute. One moment, please. Okay, there we go. So um, here's what I'm going to be talking about today. So first I'll be talking about briefly why I chose Seaborn for this project. After that, we're going to have a quick little look at the project itself. And I'll also give you a live demo just to kind of see how it works. Uh, depending on if there's anyone who would like to share, we're going to have a community showcase afterwards. Okay, so just to briefly introduce myself, uh, my name is Laura. I'm an English teacher here in Seoul, and I'm also the Code Academy Seoul chapter lead. So if you would like to join the Seoul chapter, feel free to do so. And let me just plop the link in the chat for a second, one moment. Okay. There we go. Okay. So if you haven't joined the chapter just yet, um, that's your go for it. So uh, after the event, there will be a little email asking you for some feedback and you're absolutely free to leave some constructive feedback. I always get some really lovely comments actually. So I would also enjoy some constructive feedback if you have, that's absolutely fine as well. It doesn't have to be all positive. Okay, and just to kind of get us started, I prepared a little icebreaker. Um, let's just have a look at everyone in the chat. Just one moment. Okay. Yeah, so um, I would just, um, we only have one other person joining us for today. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's let's do the Menti icebreaker anyway. So let me bring up the presentation for a second. One moment. Okay. All right. So I just wanted to know today, um, what are you currently learning or what are you currently working on? So you can leave um, a couple of answers up on the screen. I'll just give you a moment. And maybe if the QR code doesn't work, let me maybe bring up the link as well, just in case that's easier for you. Okay, there we go. Alternatively, what you can do, you can go to Menti and you can use the code and you can put in 59512674, just as mentioned up on the screen. No, not today. Okay, let me proceed with the presentation then. That's absolutely fine. So just one sec, please. Let me go back to the presentation. Okay. So I just wanted to go into what Seaborn actually is. So generally speaking, it's a library for making statistical graphics in Python. You can do some really pretty things. I prepared uh, some graphics today as well. Uh, they're just really, really publication ready. So if you wanted to visualize your data, if you wanted to do um, some storytelling, if you will, Seaborn is, yeah, I, I would say it's a really nice choice actually. Let's have a look. So just to kind of talk about uh, the inspiration for the meetup. 
So um, I'm not sure if you know. So at the moment in Korea, there is a show called Squid Game, which I have heard is popular in other parts of the world as well. And so one morning I was walking outside my place and I walked by a sort of Korean version of a sushi shop in Korean called Prejip. And it had seaborn on it. And I thought, wow, maybe that is my inspiration, really. Let's let's just stick with that then. And I messaged my friend and we just love making memes, exchanging memes all the time. And I said to her, look, Seaborn is a Python library for visualizing data. Can we do anything here? Can we make that into a meme or something? And she said, yes, we can. And she came through and she made this meme for me, which I thought I would share before we go into the more serious part of the meetup. All right. So just to give you a quick little preview, I have prepared a Jupyter notebook for today. This is what it looks like. It's a lot longer than that, obviously, but that's just sort of the landing page, if you will. And uh, here are some of the graphics that I was looking at. I was, uh, I'm going to go into more detail in a minute. And uh, what I also wanted to talk about was, um, so in my last meetup, right, I had tested it, I had checked everything, and then I still got some bugs as I was live coding, right? And at the time, I got kind of nervous, kind of panicky, um, and I talked to everyone in the audience, and they came through, they helped me with the bug as we were live, basically, and I really enjoyed that. So I decided, why not put a couple of bugs into my presentation, just because, you know, when you go online, there's a lot of tutorials, and... Well, you, you know, you look at the tutorials, everything works perfectly. There are no error messages whatsoever. Everything is great. But then when you go back and have a look yourself, sometimes you get these error messages that were not mentioned. And I just thought it would be useful to look at bugs as well. Okay, so that is it for the presentation part of the meetup. So what I would like to do now is I would like to go into the live demo part of the meetup. But before that, I just wanted to check if there are any questions. Let me just have a look at the chat. Okay. So uh, no questions so far. Okay. Let me just go in and let me demo my presentation then. One moment. Okay. It's a little bit at the bottom. Let me just scroll up just one sec. Oh my God, that's a bit at the bottom. So, okay. And let's have a look at our notebook for a minute. So our topic for today is visualizing data with Seaborn, which is a Python library. And this is the walkthrough. So uh, what I did first is I imported my libraries up here. So we've got um, our NumPy, we've got Pandas, we've got Seaborn. Sorry, one sec. Got something in my... We got Seaborn and we have Matplotlib as well. And they're going to help us visualize our data. And as I was loading my data frame into Jupyter Notebooks, right? So what happened was um, the first message that I got, it said that it was not UTF-8 encoded. Okay, so that's that's the error message that I got. It said, oh, saving disabled and see console for more details. So I was thinking, oh gosh, was UTF-8, right? And I had a quick little look around just to kind of see what it means. And basically what it is, um, uh, so UTF-8 is dominant character encoding format on the web. And you get this kind of error uh, when the software that you're using, which is um, Jupyter, sorry, just one sec, which is Jupyter, um, saves the file in a different type of encoding. And what you can do, I actually did this, and then I looked up some other fixes later on, and uh, turns out my first intuition was right. What you can do, you can upload your file to Google Sheets as a spreadsheet. Um, that's what I did. And then download it back onto your machine. 
Uh, another thing that you could do, unfortunately, it doesn't work with my Excel personally, but apparently in some versions of Excel, you can save your file as a UTF-8 compatible file. Um, my version of Excel doesn't have that, uh, but maybe you might have it. So, so that's what I did. Google Sheets uploaded and back onto my computer. Okay. And then the next thing that I did was um, I went onto Seaborn's website and they, uh, they sort of advise you that if you want to load in your data set, you have to use sns.load data set and then you read in your CV, right? So your CSV. And so I did that. And then it tells me uh, this CSV is not one of the example data sets. And I was a bit stumped because that's literally what it tells you on the website, right? It says um, use sns.load data set. I was a bit stumped. So I had a quick little look. And basically, um, what happens uh, when you use sns.load data set, what they're really telling you is to use some sort of data set that is Seaborn owned, that is on some random GitHub account somewhere. And uh, I finally found out you actually have to read in your data as a pandas data frame. So my eyes are uh, oh, a little bit irritated. Just one sec. Wait. Not quite sure what I've uh, got in my eye this morning. Sorry, just one moment. Okay, I'm not crying. I'm fine. I just got something in my eye. There we go. Okay, so basically what that's what I did. So I read it in as a pandas data frame, just per the usual. So we've got our pandas data frame here. Everything's fine. Output looking good. So I think to myself, wow, you know, are we, are we getting somewhere? And then uh, the next error that I get, right? So I'm trying to uh, use just a simple plot just to make sure it's actually working. And it's telling me, oof, well, um, you know, your variables don't seem to be numeric and that's why we can't display your data. And I was a bit confused, right? Because I've definitely got these numbers up here. They're definitely numbers. Mm. So I inspected my data frame and I had a look at the data types. And then what it told me was that my data was actually objects. So that's why it cannot be displayed. Mm. Okay, so that made sense. Uh, I went back to my Excel CSV and I changed the formatting. So I just used the graphical interface in Excel and I changed it to numbers because I was getting a little bit admittedly lazy at that point. But there is also a better way of doing it. So what you can do, you can um, use these um, methods up here. So you can, for example, change your type from string to integers. You can also um, change uh, entire columns um, to numerical data. You can do that as well with this method. And another thing uh, that you can do is um, you can set column data types as you read it in. So you can go from, um, from string to integers so it can display properly. Okay, so I finally did that. Everything's looking good. Um, and yeah, I checked it. Everything's integers now. Perfect. Okay, so uh, what I decided to do next, I decided to apply the default theme and have a little quick test. So the default theme is um, just what you see up here. Notebook, uh, dark red as a style. The palette is normally deep, which is what you see up here. But of course, you can change the colors. That's absolutely fine if you want to customize it a little bit. And then I just um, had a quick little test and I just ran a random little basic graph down here. So that was working. That's all good. And then uh, what I also did, I had a look at the data set. And the data set, if you have had a look at the website that I posted on the Meetup site, it already has some graphs and the graphs basically tell you um, the amount of fish, uh, the weight that was caught and how it has sort of changed from 2019 to 2020 to 2021. And uh, I'm not really going to go into it, but what I found interesting was, um, so in 2019, so the green line up here, uh, catches seem to be up, everything seemed to be going well. 
And then when you look at 2020, which is the purple line down here, uh, there's definitely less fish caught. So um, it's not really in the scope of this project, but what I was curious about, um, you know, were the restrictions, uh, I don't know, Corona restrictions in 2020 that sort of decreased the weight or, you know, were there some environmental factors, was there something to do with the weather? Um, and then when you look at 2021, which is the orange line, it seems to have rebounded quite a bit. So it seems to be kind of going back to 2019 levels. Okay, now going on to our actual data set. So as I was looking at the data, um, uh, which is from August 2021, so it's quite recent. So what I wanted to find out for myself, what are the rarest, what are the most common catches? in our data set, uh, what are maybe the highest value catches? So for example, if I were a fisherman, what is something that I would be uh, excited to see? What is something that I would be wanting to catch, right? In order to maximize my sales, maximize my revenue, just going on data alone. And, uh, you know, where, where should I throw my nets basically? Um, and there are also a couple of sort of technical terms that I personally found interesting. Uh, I didn't know that previously. So for example, we have uh, demersals and demersals are also called bottom feeders. So there are fish that inhabit the bottom of the ocean and some species that are mentioned are um, cod, haddock and uh, whiting. So of your typical, um, I don't know, pie, fish pie sort of fish that I've seen. And then another species that they mention are pelagics and pelagics are fish that are in the water. So they're not at the bottom, they're not at the top. They are literally swimming in the water, not near the seabed, not near the shore. And um, main species are mackerel and herring. And then uh, we also have shellfish. So shellfish, uh, so for example, we have crabs, we have scallops that are sort of type of fish. When I talk about value and quantity, just some notes. So um, in terms of value, uh, the value is in thousands of pounds and the quantity is in tons. Okay. And so what I did, so I read in my, um, I read in my data frames and first what I wanted to do is I just wanted to look at the catches in terms of weight and in terms of value separately. So first I tried some scatter plots in Seaborn. And if we look at the weight, right? So generally speaking, um, pelagics seem to be not caught that much, but there is one outlier up here on the top. And then we have demersals and shellfish. And they seem to be sort of similar in terms of weight, whereas shellfish are a little bit spread out. Demersals are a little bit closer together, generally speaking. And then if we look at value, I thought that was really interesting as well. I thought that was fascinating. So in terms of value, pelagic species are really at the bottom. They're really not that popular. <laughs> Excuse me. Or maybe there's not such a demand. Or people just aren't willing to pay for it. Um, and then we have shellfish. So generally speaking, again, there is one outlier up here. I'll, I'll reveal what the outlier is in a minute. Um, they're generally caught, yeah, so the, the value is kind of in the middle, if I had to compare these three species. And then for demersals, uh, there are some sort of common values that are sort of similar to shellfish, but they have a lot more outliers than shellfish, interestingly. So you have some really expensive species of demersals, apparently. And then I decided to try some other graphs. So here I wanted to um, compare the weights individually. And uh, again, similar results. So we have um, some more outliers for Demersals and then uh, for pelagics and then for um, for shellfish we have there's they're sort of a little bit more concentrated together and again uh, I looked at the value separately so a lot of outliers for um, demersals 
and the value for the pelagic species is quite concentrated. And then again, the shellfish are sort of relatively concentrated as well, just with one outlier. Okay. I tried one more thing, which is called a um, sort of violin plot. Um, but that didn't really tell me too much. So I decided to um, use multivariate graphs. And so what a multivariate graph is, it kind of gives you multiple views on data. First, I tried this one here, a regression model. I didn't find that all that useful. It didn't really tell me that much about my data. And then I tried um, this one here, uh, which is a join plot. And it's kind of like a graphical interface to a class called join plot. But again, I didn't find that all that representative at all. And uh, what I then went to um, is kind of like joint plots and uh, KDE plots. And I thought they really help visualize the data a lot more um, eloquently. They really tell us a little bit more about the data in a sense that that is really intuitively understandable. So if we have a little look here, um, so pelagic species and orange, right? Uh, they're not caught that often, and that's probably because their value is not that high. So I think that makes sense. If, excuse me, if something is not that valuable, then maybe as a fisherman, I wouldn't be grabbing it, right? I wouldn't be fishing for it. And then if we look at shellfish here in green, so the value seems to be sort of in the mid range um, compared to the other species. And the weights seem to be, yeah, sort of similar to demersals, maybe maybe a little bit lower than demersals overall. And then for demersals, we have um, a lot of high value fish, and they're also fished a lot, which makes sense. So if I am if I am a fisherman, right, I want to fish what is going to bring me money because I have to live. Um, and then if I have a look here. Okay, so we've got um, a similar graph down here, which is a joint plot. And the interesting thing is it has these little graphs on the side as well. So I, I thought this graph is, uh, it really visualizes what we're trying to say quite succinctly. So we have pelagic species at the bottom. We have our demersals and they seem to be, um, they seem to be among the most caught amongst with uh, shellfish. And they seem to be really valuable as well. Okay. And one last graph that I looked at. I wanted to use a scatter plot um, in a different manner. And uh, it kind of compares our weight. So generally, this is the type of weight that we're looking at. It's quite concentrated in sort of the lower left corner. And we've got our um, we've got our prices, our values up here. So uh, now that I've looked at all the data, basically, so generally speaking, the most valuable catches that I can get as a fisherman are demersals. And when I looked at the data, so the priciest catches are sole, turbot, and base. Then I looked at shellfish, and they come sort of second in terms of value overall. But there is one exception, which, uh, which are lobsters. Okay, so they're really, if you, if you have a look here, the outlier, the orange one, oh, sorry, the, the green one over here, the uh, outlier up here, these are lob lobsters, um, and, but they're sort of similar in terms of weight, actually, the mussels and uh, shellfish, and pelagic species are neither caught that much nor all that valuable, except for some mackerel species, uh, but what I was thinking, right, so the mussels and shellfish live at the bottom of the ocean so maybe they're not that easy to catch for so if i was a fisherman depending on my equipment um maybe i might be looking at pelagic species just because they might be easier to catch they swim in the water column you just kind of throw out your net and you just grab them as they swim along really okay so that is it for my presentation let me just stop the recording right here Okay, yeah, and that is it. Stopping recording in three, two, one.